Hey guys, John Rettinger here with an unboxing for you of the just released Samsung Impression for AT&T Wireless. This phone will run you $199 after a $50 rebate and a new two-year contract from AT&T. So let's go ahead and open it up. This phone was just announced actually a few weeks ago and AT&T had a really quick release with it. I'm actually very excited to see what this looks like. So we'll hack that open. Pull out the box here. It's your standard AT&T fare box with the orange and white pictured device on the front. Then you know it can do text, IM, email, and it's got Bluetooth built in. But what doesn't have Bluetooth built in nowadays? Listing some more of the features on the box on the front here. Same stuff that I just mentioned. On the back, looks just like the front, just a picture of the device. Let's go ahead and open it up, see what we got. So it's again the same standard AT&T box with the tray and nothing much inside. So here we've got a CD, Samsung Impression, Interactive Tutorial, English User Manual and Spanish User Manual, and PC Studio Manager. Your required reading materials, quick start guide, although I don't know who reads those. So here is the phone itself, I'll go over the specs in a minute, let's see what's in the box. Here is the battery. Let's see if we can see what the milliamp hour battery is. Life is on it. It is 1000 milliamp hour battery, which is actually pretty good for a non smartphone device. We've got a USB charger with that Samsung proprietary port right there, it's like a flattened USB. Wall charger. And the device itself. Let's take a look at the phone. We'll do a little quick walk through the phone and then we'll do some size comparisons and go over the specs. Log in, stay connected, instant messaging. So the front of the device, the reason that this is really pretty high hyped is because it's got an AMOLED screen. I don't know how to pronounce that, AMOLED. And essentially what that is, you may hear it kind of talked about a lot. It just describes a specific type of kind of ultra thin, ultra bright technology. It doesn't require a backlight. Uh, and that's really it, just the AMOLED just refers to technology behind that and the addressing of the pixels that go with it. So this phone right here has a 240 by 400 pixels and it can show 262 colors. Just know that it looks really nice. So there's the screen on the side of the device. We've got a volume up and down. Looks like a dedicated camera key. On the right side of the device, we've got a soft key, or hard key rather, and we have a lock key on the side. And if you slide it open, behind the touchscreen is a full four-row QWERTY keyboard. And this uses the same TouchWiz interface that you see in other Samsung devices, such as the Eternity and the Behold. So some of the other specs on the device that's AT&T puts on the box and things that I've done some research on. It is a quad band phone, so it'll work anywhere in the world. It is, of course, 3G, weighs 5.3 ounces, and it's 4.4 inches by 2.28 times 0.61 inches. And that's kind of hard to see, so let me give you some size comparisons here with some other phones that you guys may be familiar with. First one, the iPhone. You can see that the screen on the impression really does look nice and big compared to the iPhone. Thickness wise, the impression is definitely thicker because it does have that slide out QWERTY keyboard, but not by much. It's definitely one of the thinner slide out keyboards uh, that I've seen. Definitely kudos to Samsung for that. The next phone we'll compare with, you guys may be familiar with, is the AT&T Fuse. This is a Windows Mobile smartphone. And I should say again that this is not a smartphone as you guys would consider it. It's more of a feature phone. It does have email capabilities but it's Java based and it does have an HTML browser but it's not going to have the same calendar built in functionality that you get from a full blown smartphone OS. So size comparison here, this also has a slide out QWERTY keyboard so it's a little more of a fair comparison. Definitely a little bit smaller but it's certainly much thicker. So another full keyboard device, the Samsung Epix. This is another Windows mobile phone. And this has the keyboard on the front, 
But actually, thickness-wise, they're almost exactly the same. So it really goes to show how thin Samsung was able to make this. And I gotta say, just on initial impression, build quality and the slide out does feel very nice. It's got a good feel in the hand. Although the spring assisted keyboard doesn't really launch until you get almost up to the top. But it does have a very nice feel to it. It's got that hard plastic that makes you feel like it will be protected. While we're on the back of the device, by the way, it does have a 3.0 megapixel camera with a speaker grill on the back. So back to the size, the last device you guys might be familiar with is the Trio Pro. And there is size so comparison as well. And there really is not much of a thickness difference. And on this you get the full landscape QWERTY, so it really is very nice. Let's go ahead and power this thing on and let's see what it looks like. Alright, so I did pop in the battery and put in a SIM card. You take off the screen protector here and I will power it up and while it's powering on I'll tell you a little bit more about the device. Hit the end button right there to turn it on. You'll see it just has three buttons on the front, send, an end key, and a menu button. So the 1000 milliamp hour batteries, it'll last up to three hours of talk time and 250 hours of standby time, which is actually not bad. So we'll let this thing keep booting up here. This also has what AT&T calls their CV, so you can actually watch television on it. You get your news, sports, weather, entertainment, and uh, a few more. She has some some news on there as well. So it is booting up. At least I think it is. There we go. So it is already booted up. Screen is locked. Press and hold the lock key to unlock. So we'll do that. All right, so tap the center. This is sort of similar to Windows Mobile here. Tap the center to target and repeat it. So we'll do that. And there is no stylus on the device. This is meant to be used with your finger, and it is a resistive touchscreen. And there we are. It's a very familiar Samsung TouchWiz interface. Move that. You've got a whole bunch of widgets. Looks like they added some more widgets here. When I do a review, I'll kind of walk you through what all the choices are. And I am getting haptic feedback as I'm going through and using this. Let's see the screen rotation speed as I slide this out. Not bad, rotated relatively quickly. Those menus down the side rotate. Let's see that again. Very quick. Watch them change. It's very subtle, actually. Almost instantaneous, actually. This is always nice. So it goes to show this is not an underpowered device. When you have a slow processor, generally it'll take quite a bit to render. Anyway guys, just a quick unboxing of the Samsung Impression. Hope you enjoyed. As I usually do with phones, I will use it for a few days and post a review, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And for exclusive content, be sure to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash John4Lakers. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.